Hmm. What if indeed? What's up guys on Pumpsu here and here we are to do a nice little breakdown slash discussion on Well What if Yuta does win? Can he win? What does it mean for the narrative? What does it mean for the character interactions? What do we lose? What do we gain? And what doors open up? And what closes if Yuta Okotsu were to actually win? Survive and triumph in this battle against the King of Curses, Ryoman Sukuna, alongside the Queen of Curses, the Husk of Riko Orimoto. It's quite the interesting discussion, especially in this sea of negativity. So let's not waste any more time, and let's hop right into it. Editing me. Ready. Three, two, one, go. What's up, guys? That guy with a pencil here. Fun fact. I do happen to have it on me and keep it on me at all times. And another fun fact. Yuta Okotsu tends to... Can I blind reach? Yeah. Oh, that didn't sound good. Can I... Yeah. Okay. He also tends to have it on him and keep it on him at all times. To the point where when challenged by the king of curses, when he sees it out of the corner of his eye, he sees the mighty king charging for him, coating his hands with incursed energy, he manages to clash with the king of curses. Yuta Okotsu, Yuta Okotsu, Yuta Okotsu. He's a man of many fans, a man of many origins, a man of many ways, a man of many plays. Yuta Okotsu is many, 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 many things. But of course, right now, if you've been existing, not just on my channel, but in the community of Jujutsu Kaisen, we don't just see a teeny, tiny, itty bitty little end flag flying on the top of Yuta's beautiful spiky... No. No, we see a massive, massive, gargantuan, bigger than Rika Orimoto itself kinda end flag posted flying high in Yuta's dome piece. If we lost the man, the myth, the legend, Gojo Satoru to Ryomen Tsukuda, the strongest sorcerer of the modern day, what good is the second strongest sorcerer? What good is he but a paltry follow-up to the original? How can he ever hope to rival the king of curses? He who has stood unrivaled and threatens everyone he knows and loves. What good could Yuta Okotsu do? Would it even make sense? I feel like that's the first big question that we have to tackle. Would it even make sense for you to beat Sukuna? A big thing that a lot of Sukuna fans, a lot of Sukuna haters, a lot of Sukuna individuals, a lot of Sukuna anti-individuals, regardless, a lot of readers of Jujutsu Kaisen are, to say the very least, a bit worried about Sukuna's end, just in general, mainly because of how powerful he's been made. A big thing that comes with the whole thing about making a very, very, very powerful antagonist is that it's very difficult to defeat them in a way that feels satisfying. You see this across numerous series, in numerous different fashions, whether they be as popular as the Big Three, to a random manga on the street. The ability in fiction to create an extremely powerful antagonist is necessary. Of course, it's very important to create an obstacle that will be difficult for our heroes to overcome, that will cause them to struggle, to grow, to evolve, to become better individuals, stronger individuals, faster individuals, greater individuals, and ultimately stand rival to these great opponents. But the issue, that a lot of people are worried about is the execution of Sukuna. Not in the sense of how he's written, but literally the execution of Sukuna. How's the man going to fall? Because the big reason, a big reason why a lot of people, whether they like him or not, agree, myself included, that Gojo did have to fall. But even then, that's the Gojo Glazer and me fighting against that. But that aside, it's because he was too powerful, right? He invalidated every other character. And for the longest time, he was believed to be the pinnacle of the series. And thusly, he had to be put in a box for a majority of it to happen. The majority of it where he wasn't in a box was planning to get him put in a box. And then he lasted about 16 chapters before he fell. After getting freed from the box. Like 15. Because 221 did. 236, but you would include 221 in there. So 16 chapters since he was reintroduced only to get packed immediately because he just makes the story a bit too difficult to write. Understandably so. But we see this with the backlash to how Gojo was felled. 
you make an extremely powerful character, you need to take them out in an extremely satisfying way. And unfortunately, a lot of people do not see that for Gojo's end. I've more so grown to appreciate it, but then again, time softens me on pretty much everything. I don't know. I, it's hard for me to hold a grudge in general, especially against a piece of fiction. But, Nad, well... And, uh, but, other than that thing, other than the disgusting waste of space, it's hard for me to hold a grudge. Very, very difficult for me to hold a grudge. So, it's why I have grown mostly indifferent to the end of Satoru Gojo, if not even liking certain aspects of it, and even appreciating the way it was incorporated into the narrative and how Maharaga was used for it. All that aside, we now have a new problem. Ryo Mansuka. Him being so overwhelmingly powerful that most of the fandom, myself included, is genuinely struggling to perceive and fathom a way that he could lose. Because remember, it was not this Sukuna that beat Gojo Satoru. It was not this Sukuna that beat Gojo Satoru. No, the one that put Gojo Satoru in two pieces like a Kit Kat bar was not any of those who could... No, it was this Sukuna. Not even this one. It was all the way down this Sukuna. Asukuna so fatigued, embarrassed, diminished, missing a hand, missing some toes. It was this Sukuna that <coughs> Satoru Gojo in one attack. A Satoru Gojo who was currently tweaking off of four black flashes. That Satoru Gojo is the one that fell to Ryom and Sukuna. It was that one. That ended up being sent to the Shadow Realm by this Sukuna. Not, not this guy. Not this massive, four-armed, perfectly built. Need I, need I go to the greatest glazer in all of history? Need I remind you how beautiful he is? The man's literally described as perfect. Not even by Kashimo, but by the narrator. The plot itself is going out of its way to explain why Sukuna is literally Jujutsu personified. He is a deity given fleshly form. Ignore the end of 237, which dares, and I mean dares to say, that he's a curse taking fleshly form. This is perfection. Strive for this. If you're going for Jujutsu, you want this. This is the ideal form. You don't want to be shredded with six-packs abs. Six-packs abs? Lord. You don't want to be shredded with six-pack of abs, that I can't even say it properly. You don't want to be shredded. You want to be nice and chunky, with two whole extra arms weighing down, and a whole belly mount to eat twice as good. That's what you want. And all this is great. All this is fantastic. It makes Sukuna amazingly powerful, which is wonderful. But the issue is, if he took down the strongest of the modern day, and he straight up off-screened the strongest of the Edo, to the point where the Edo does not land a single hit the moment he incarnates and gets turned into a waffle. I'm sorry. What is the rest of our cast and crew meant to do? What is a character who, with as much potential and notoriety as Higuruma Hiromi meant to do? What is a character who has been struggling for the longest time to be relevant like Yuji Tadori meant to do? What is a character as amazing yet simple and clean as Kusakabe truly meant to do against the king of curses? Look at Choso being donatoed by Ryo Mitsukuna because he's just that strong. Once again, this man disappeared out of the pathway of a piercing blood that looked like it was two feet from him. This is the man who, at, and I know people don't like it when I say this, and admittedly, I am kind of gassing it, but at the same time, it's fiction. Fiction, fiction do be fiction in. But like, this is the same guy who we see on panel else speak in electromagnetic wave. You know those things that move at light speed? That Kashimo fires? Sugana starts speaking after it's halfway there. And he slices it in half. Kashimo, arguably one of the fastest characters in the series. In base! In base, in terms of sheer combat speed, one of the fastest characters in the series. Is getting ragdolled when he's at bare minimum five times stronger and gets a speed amp. Does not land a singular hit. And I'm sorry, you mean to tell me our cast and crew is meant to be this? It's supposed to be that? Like, how? What is the, how are we going to do it and make it not feel like nonsense? That's a big issue a lot of people are having, and I understand it. But luckily enough, luckily enough, I think there is hope. 
even if I think there isn't hope. That's <laughs> okay, Akutami. But here's the thing. I think it's reasonable, and all the keys and pieces have been put in place for a certain thing to transpire. And that certain thing would be Yuta Okotsu transcending to the level of the heavens. Truly awakening to his potential, and even surpassing the likes of Satoru Gojo and Ryoman Tsukuna as Honored Ones. Because all the pieces have been laid out. Everything has been put down just vaguely enough, and things have been said just vaguely enough with enough emphasis that anything can happen. Of course... This anything can happen can also mean we open up 249 and Yuta's in half. Of course, of course, don't get me wrong. I can definitely see that vision. But no comments that Tsukuna makes. Hmm. Well, I'll be darned. It appears that not just the boys, but everyone's basic curse energy reinforcement techniques have drastically improved. Note, not improved, not slightly improved, not gotten better. No, drastically improved. If, if characters like Kusakabe, characters admittedly with extreme potential like Higuruma, characters like Itadori Yuji, all these characters who have talent to various degrees and are prodigies to various degrees, if their curse energy reinforcement has drastically improved, I wonder, I wonder how much his has improved. And remember, Shuto Okotsu, he's quite the bulky little boy. Don't forget. His main and most famous opponent is Ryu Ishigori, the man with the highest curse energy output in all of history. And that's this fellow right here. Of course, Ryu Ishigori is a monster, a beast, a demon, the highest curse energy output ever recorded, even including in transcending 20 finger Ryo Mitsukuna. And sure, there were definitely moments where Granite Blast would char Yuta's hands and wear him down, but that was before. His cursed energy technique and its reinforcement drastically improved. So, in terms of durability, there's a solid case to be made that Mr. Okotsu right here could stand on the likes of maybe his Shikigami in terms of just overall durability back when she was fully manifested if his reinforcement techniques have drastically improved. So, in terms of durability, it's there. I don't see Sukuna simply punching you out of existence like he ended. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, but like he ended up punching Joseph so straight up the door. He didn't even punch him. He didn't even give him the good, decent respect of being punched. He buried his hand. <laughs> I'm sorry, all the Joseph fans out there. I know, I know. It's, I sound, it sounds mean. But like it, it, it happened. It happened. But like, I don't see that happening to you, Dakotsu. While Ryo Sukun is powerful, nothing's been stated about his output transcending Ryu's. Especially if you go with the idea that. The stronger the fingers have gotten was only greater reserves of cursed energy. We know cursed energy reserves don't actually equal your output, or else <laughs> Sukuna would sneeze on Gojo and he would atomize. Because, you know, he has more cursed energy than Yuta. Amount doesn't directly correlate to output, meaning that this Sukuna may just be as strong output wise as he was a thousand years ago. Meaning that, sure, he's more than powerful enough to double donut a high grade one level fighter, but a drastically improved special grade tier warrior? Hmm. Quite interesting. Entirely possible that he's strong enough to survive basic hits from Ryo Mitsukuna. Maybe strong enough to even survive a dismantle. A cleave. Remember, Yuji Itadori, after getting gripped up in the most embarrassing way possible, having his whole side torn up, he, he recovered. He came back and revealed, of course, his evolution and development and the ability to wield and utilize reverse curse technique. Remember who also could use reverse curse technique to the highest level in the series? One of three people who can do it. Not even Gojo Santoru could do it. Yuta Okotsu bared the level of RCT that would allow him to transcend the boundaries between himself and others and heal other people. That's something he just has. And has had since Volume Zero, before any month training. Huh. Very, very interesting. It seems like this Yudo Kotsu fellow is stacking up. He should basically just be a better Itadori, right? Like, especially if you go with narrative arguments. Of course, 
Feats kind of get funny about that, but hey, we see him clash directly with Ryo Mitsukuno, who's charging at him with a blade hand coated in cursed energy. And Yuto Kotsu, without flaring his own aura at all, boom, clashes, rings off, word for word, bar for bar. And we know this Yuta is simply Himothy, simply much stronger than he ever was before, by the fact that, not this, not even that, but true to form something along these lines, occurred. Something where Yuta Okotsu was proven to be blessed, to the point where he could remove the head of another major antagonist in Big Jaku in one smooth, buttery swing. In base! In base! And once again, notice, the blade is not infused with anything. This is just Yuta's raw swinging force. Base Yuta! Base Yuta! No full power? Nothing. No connection to Rika, no nothing! Able to swing like that, like that. For real, for real, for real, for real. And just remove Kenny's head before he could do anything. Kenny! A special grade. A special grade capable of surviving headshots from Yuki Sakumo, one of the hardest hitting characters in the entire series based on the properties of her technique. One tapped. On guard and one tapped by Yuta Akotsu. So clearly his striking strength has gotten better. Much, much better. So much better that it's in fact possible at all for him to clash with Ryo Mitsukuna and not have his blade immediately shatter so much that he could clash with Ryo Mitsukuna and Ryo Mitsukuna simply acknowledges him and warns him that he must fight all he can so strong so powerful so beefy so juicy that the king himself without even seeing the man in literally over a month acknowledges that hmm which means that the main dish is the possessed brat Possessed brat most likely means the queen. Yuta Okotsu. The king simply acknowledges Yuta Okotsu's presence, his main dish status, his level of power and strength that transcends everyone around him to a point. And this is the beauty of Yuta. Not only has his strength seemingly improved, based on Sugita's statement, it's most likely that his cursed energy, reinforcement, and durability has improved, but it seems like his general speed has improved too, as once again he simply blitzes and one-taps Kenjaku after Kenjaku notices him, blitzing the activation of a reverse curse technique in anti-gravity, which is a 360 AoE attack. He blitzes it, something that Yuki Sakumo couldn't dream to do, something that a piercing blood couldn't dream to do. Yuta Kotsu is extremely fast. And extremely strong and extremely durable but of course he's not as fast as Ryo Mitsukuna he's not as strong as Ryo Mitsukuna he's not even as durable as Ryo Mitsukuna all this is wonderful all this is so sweet and wonderful and beautiful but ultimately Yuta Kotsu would still fall short right like it should be impossible right if only if only he had something Something, something that could help him clear that amazing gap in durability. And most likely the existing gap in speed. And heck, even the hack's abilities. Something as dangerous, something as potent, something as mighty as the deadly and dangerous slash that cuts the very world itself. Oh, 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 buttery. If only there was something Yuta could do to come with this massive stat disparity. If oh, wait a minute. Well, in terms of the attack potency, while well, Yuta's shown the clash, it's most likely that Tsuga was suppressed. But we do know that Yuta Kotsu does, in fact, have something that can help him leap the bounds of durability that exists between him and the King of Curses. We've seen it before, used on somebody who Yuta himself could not harm with basic attacks. Do you remember a little something I like to call Thin Icebreaker? Ryu Ishigori, Mr. Highest Output in History, went what? <laughs> from one hit of Thin Icebreaker. And just one swing of it. One swing of it. And you know the coach who pulled that out on the fly. Bro didn't know a breaker from an ice thin that very morning. And you're telling me he's had a whole month? A whole month to train with that? To stack on top of his already insane reinforcement? Hmm. Seems, seems quite interesting. 
huh. So maybe the power gap and the durability advantage that Sugina has is covered. But of course, you know, there's still the issue of speed, right? Like, how is Yuta Kotsu supposed to eclipse? Well, of course, we do see him, seemingly enough, go relative with Sukuna, being able to exchange a slash and slash with him. So there seems to be some relativity there, but once again, it's most likely that is holding back to some degree. But at the same time, there is a character who was recently introduced that has a technique that would benefit a whole lot if the wielder of said technique had reverse curse technique. The ability to transcend the eventual feebleness of their body that would break down under immense pressure. I'm sure you remember his name. I sure remember his glaze. Yes, Yuta Kotsu should be able to get the full detailed download on Kashimo Hajime. The monster, an electric beast that transcended the world in his own way, was the strongest of his own era in a certain shape or form. And as 237 clearly acknowledges, Kashime Hajimo is a very different beast in Mythical Phantom Beast Amber than he is in base. Improved agility due to increased activity of electromagnetic signals in the brain. Not electromagnetic. Sound waves that optimize and attune to the natural frequencies of substances. Electromagnetic waves that vaporize irradiated objects. Kashimo's body manifests these phenomena, and he has passed beyond the human realm. Yuzo Kotsu may not have been watching, but maybe he was. Maybe he observed it. Maybe he has the general idea of it. Because remember what Yuta Kotsu's ability innately is. It is not sky manipulation. The external ability is Riga. But remember what Yuta's own internal ability that he has access to is. It is something simple and sweet. But a copy. The ability to wield the curse technique that allows him to steal other curse techniques. Yuta Kotsu has that. And... What did he just spend in our world multiple months, but a million in their world a few minutes watching? Oh, that's right. He was watching the greatest battle in all of history. The strongest sorcerer of today versus the strongest sorcerer in history. He just got a full display of the Limitless. Something that could help him buff his speed, that could buff his attack potency, that could buff his defense, that could buff everything! Yuta Kotsu got full display of that, and of course he has access to Rika, who gives him unlimited curse energy, meaning he could actually likely maintain the stress of the Limitless, even without the Six Eyes. So, naturally, this leads to an idea. Especially if you were to tag on even more hacks, such as Jacob's Ladder, and go a little bit crazy, a little bit buku bonkers. Heavens forbid you give him Star Rage, or Ryushi Gori's technique, or anything of the sort. Simply giving him a few things makes it viable for you to defeat Suka. It does. It does. I don't think it's impossible for you to defeat him. Especially considering Suka is very clearly not in his peak prime state. Once again, I point it out every time, but I shall remind you again. Sukuna's hand never fully heals. And before he coats it in Cursed Energy, it simply never, ever, 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 never, ever, ever, ever stops steaming. He's clearly not at his best. I mean, just, just, just look at bro. Does he look like he's at his best? But, like, still, he's clearly not at his best. And he clearly doesn't necessarily view the humans as any sort of threat. He doesn't seem to buy into the idea that anyone could harm him. Because, of course, he's the king of curses. Who, who can arm the king of curses? Yeah, he's, he's that guy. He's that dude. He's the top of the mountain, the pinnacle of the series by a long shot by now. But, of course, such arrogance can lead to a downfall. Such arrogance can lead to a sacrifice. Such arrogance can lead to very, very interesting character conflict. And, of course, you may be wondering, okay, Pencil Man, you spent the entirety of this video so far just to find Yuta on a power scaling front. But what about a story front? Sure. You can make Yuta as powerful as possible. You can make it so that he got the right abilities, he removed the time limit. He did all that in order to become the most powerful being to ever being. But what does that mean for the story? Doesn't that slaughter any hope of continuation and sort of end the story very, very quickly? Yeah. Yeah. It does. It does. Kind of, sort of. Essentially, unless Sukuna were to hypothetically begin the merger on his perishing breath, Yuta Kotsu would have simply won. Again, I'd like taking the series. But, I mean, he would save it. He wouldn't have to worry about his own end. 
That'd be very, very good. It'd be very, very nice. <laughs> so, technically, the story does suffer, but it suffers in the same way that the story suffers if Gojo won. As in, oh no, the really, really strong guy beat the other really, really strong guy. Now, new strongest guy is new strongest guy. Except new strongest guy is nice, and not literally the embodiment of pure liquid evil. Hooray! Like, like that, that's pretty much it. That's the story outcome. But, of course, you know, JJK. Wonderful story. But I know the real reason people would have issue with Ryo and Sukuna falling to Yuta Itadori. Not Yuta Itadori. Lord, Yuji Itadori. Not Yuji Itadori either. Yuta Okotsu. Third time's a charm. It's the fact that Yuta Okotsu is in fact Yuta Okotsu. Sounds simple, I know. But, especially at this point, with the hypothetical deletion of Kenjaku from the narrative, which is another video for another time, which we'll get into, with the hypothetical deletion of Big Jaku, it's honestly not impossible that Tsukuna is our final villain. Even with my denial, he could be our final villain. At least our final villain that has any sort of sentience or thought or direct interaction with any of these characters. And ultimately, Itadori Uchi has an infinitely more interesting dynamic with Ryoben Tsukuna than Yuta Okotsu does. But it's not to say that the dynamic isn't there. In the sense that, sure, these two have never spoken a word to each other. I, they are not even on second name basis, not to talk of first name. But, the... How do I put this? Even though it doesn't necessarily fit well for me, because I would like Itadori to get the lick back, realize that if Yuta wins here, one, there's the merger, which can still get got back eventually, and two... Sukuna's not truly gone. This is the big thing. This is the big thing about hypothetically deleting this 20-finger Sukuna. Sure, all the cursed energy would be gone, all that power would be dispersed, all that. But, with that one missing finger, there's never a close. There's never an end to the story. So sure, you took Kotsu may defeat Ryo and Sukuna, but still there's that finger there, which again, you could do literally anything with. You could give it to Big Jaku, for all I know, who's just fall across the ground to try and reach it and then nibble on it in order to restore himself but his head literally got lopped off he's not dragging his body around but still these things can happen on a character level sure would it sack Yuji Tadori? of course but since when does gay gay care about Yuji Tadori? I, I mean look, look at bro look at bro's brother look at bro being reduced to a brother catcher absolutely horrid but naturally fine sure Let's say the story doesn't end there. Let's say that there are all the differences that I've mentioned so far that would allow for this scenario to remotely transpire as it did. What about the character level? What about the interactions between Yuta and Tsukuna? How do you write that? What does that go... The concept of being powerful because of love versus the concept of being powerful without love. Don't get me wrong. I love Itadori as a Choso, not a Choso, as a parallel to Sukuna more than the next guy. I was about to say as much, but more than the next guy. I love that these two have this very oddly specific and very animalistic dynamic with each other to the point where they just... They are the embodiments of their respective ideas, of course. And to the point why Sukuna despises Itadori for what he's done to him, and why Itadori despises Sukuna for all that he's done to him. But it's very specifically Mr. Okotsu who deals in the ideas of connection. Mr. Okotsu who deals in the ideas of making things work certain ways. It's Mr. Okotsu who can evolve at rapid rates, who can become something greater, who can do all of this very exclusively because of the love of one person. A person he cursed, and all he has left over is their husk, but that one person, they're still there. That one person is what gave you to his strength. He's the antithesis, even more than Yuji is, to Sukuna's philosophy about isolation breeding strength. Egoism and self-centralism breeding strength. The power that Yuta has achieved, in spite of his very present humanity, is a testament to the opposition of Sukuna's morality, his focus and all that. 
So you can definitely still tackle this with Utah Kotsu. You can definitely still make it nearly the exact same as certain other battles with Utah Kotsu. You can do all that. And you can have Utah win without any of the downsides of Utah winning. Which, in my opinion, works very, very, very well as a character motivation for these two to fight, for these two to square off, to truly see who's correct. As every battle, some, not every battle, but a majority of battles, if you break them down, are a battle of two ideologies, which two people fundamentally disagree on. So, I see scaling. I see story reason, I see character reason, I see interpersonal character reason, I see fun. So yes, it is possible for you to Kotsu to win, and for it to not feel like absolute garbage. It'd be a very hard task. Very, very hard task. But if there's anyone up to the test, I would believe Gege Akutami is. However, that's what I think about Yuta hypothetically winning, whether or not he can, whether or not he does, and what may happen if he does. The merger. The merger. Or like, merger Sukuna. One of the two. But with that being the case, I do a hundred million billion trillion quintillion percent believe they should smash that like button. No, but if you made it all the way to the end of the video, please do me a favor and leave loveless. Leave love less in the comment section down below. Oh, right, so thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe. Make sure that the notification bell so you not miss out on any videos that come to the channel. Also, also, I do happen to have a Patreon below where you can support me for as low as one. Get them one down a month. Get things like exclusive videos, early content, and more. You also now become a member of the channel for as low as three dollars a month to get the same perks and more. Some of those perks include every variations of all my content and a live reaction to the very next chapter of Jujutsu Kaisen. Now, I'd like to thank you so much for watching once again, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is. Hey, please. This is that guy with the pencil writing off. I'd like to give a thank you to our three dollar members: Connor Plays, Red Wolf Four Seven Six Five, Greyhound, and Akids Void. I'd like to give another thank you to our five dollar patrons: Victor, Sean, RNG Master, Midnight Gem Lord, Metal Solid Crisis, Kevin, Igneal. Endemics LND. I'd like to give another thank you to our $7 member, Autumn's Morning Lazo. I'd like to give another chunk of thank you to our $10 patrons, Robbie Uchiha, Joaquin, Idemokami, and China Doll 09. I'd like to give a fat, juicy, scrumdillion just thank you to our wonderful $25 member, Alex Ice Rose. I'd like to give another hefty, hefty, trifty, nifty thank you to our $25 patron, Calvin Elder.